Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Innovate BC. We're glad you're here. I hope you're having a good day. We're midweek, so I hope good things are happening and good things are, are to come. So we give thanks to Creator, first and foremost, for the, the gift of this day um, and all the goodness that surrounds us. We have this beautiful Mother Earth here in Edmonton, the Miskwichi West Sky again. We, we had some... Uh, freezing rain, so it is icy out there, uh, but regardless of, of the weather, regardless of what's going on in our personal and professional lives, Creator always oh, surrounds us with goodness. So, welcome, welcome. Um, so today's webinar, we are super excited. It is the environment and economy of today and tomorrow through climate change lens. And we're particularly excited because of our guest speaker, Chief Patrick, who is joining us. Um, he's, uh, uh, I think, located 18 kilometers south of Lit Lytton, BC, Canada's hotspot. Um, he is of the Kanaka Bar Indian Band and has lived in the Fraser Canyon all his life and has worked with his community since 1978 to design and complete projects that reestablish foundational sustainable stability in air, water, food, and shelter with supporting resilient systems like storage, energy, communications, and transportation for the environment and economy of today. And more importantly, for tomorrow, we always think of the seven generations. So he's gonna speak about how the community reviews every project program and makes decisions through the lens of climate change and why this is now the only path forward for them. So he will share some, will highlight some of the community successes and share some of the challenges as he is fond of the sayings, live with the right ones, learn from the wrong ones, and the secret is doing, not talking. I love both of those. So in 2018, Chief Patrick was honored with a Clean Energy BC Lifetime Achievement Award for his work in renewable energy, project design, permitting, development and operations, and recently was honored with the Clean 50 Lifetime Achievement Award for his work on climate change awareness and action. Brilliant, brilliant. So Kanaka's 2021 Community Resilience Plan was also recognized as the Clean 50 <laughs> 2022 top project. So we have an award winner amongst us to, today. Uh, we're so honored, Chief Patrick, that you are here with us. Um, and so I am passing this virtual mic over to you. At the end, there will be opportunity for any questions or comments, discussions. If you have anything along the way, feel free to write it in the chat box and I will make sure that we will get to it. So we welcome you all to this platform and to today's conversation. So Chief Patrick, over to you. Well, excellent and uh, thank you so much. Um, so I I have a, an image showing on the screen. Uh, can somebody give me a thumbs up that I've actually got an image up on your screen? Hello? Yes, yes it's there. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so I've got a thumbs up from, from Darcy. So this is excellent then. All right, and so thank you so much for offering me to share. So let's get right into it. Um, before I get into my introduction, uh, please note there are four images on the top and four highlighted dates on the top. Uh, pay attention to those. They should probably should probably surface in the presentation. So Kukshte, Bathukpi, Akwit Lo Kandu, and Kukshte Kandu, Kukshte Shukshnuka, Kukpi Kanat Yahan Shkwash, Kukluktay Muf. So those simple words I'm saying, thank you, Creator, for this day. Thank you for the gift of life and the power of choice. Thank you, Kandu, for giving me this opportunity to share and most importantly, thanking all the participants for choosing to be part of this participation. I understand, uh, I, I also introduced myself uh, as Chief Patrick Michelle of the Kanaka Bar Indian Band. Um, on this, on the right hand side of this, it's gonna become important later because it's a very small section of nation lands. But here in our community, we have autonomy over watersheds. It is there that my community exerts the title and rights 
decision making authority over. So my nation is called the Inslakat Nation, and my traditional community names is Aklaktenmok, which means the crossing place. Um, and of course, Kukbi Kanatya translates roughly as Chief Kanaka Barnuban. So the Klaklukten Mulk managed the land and resources here at Kanaka Bar within its purple polygon area for more than 8,000 years, and we did fine, thank you very much. Uh, there were some simple, uh, and when it comes to land and resource management, first and foremost was asked. If we caught you on the land using the land and resources, we would tell you to stop that, that meant our Aboriginal rights and titles came with an enforcement power, which we call noodle neck or finger wag. Don't do that. And if you kept doing it, then we resorted to this. And then if that didn't work, then we recorded to what's called a dip in the Fraser River. So for 8,000 years, we managed land and resources to the benefit of future generations. And for those people who did not comply with our protocols, uh, we took care of business. In 1808, Simon Fraser showed up. We had contact and we lived in a relatively, uh, I would call it a symbiotic relationship. We helped them, they helped us. But then gold was found in 1858, and we, we wound up fighting a protracted war with loss of life on both sides. And so uh, during that time, and I, I can tell you that the concept of gold finding here, as long as people were doing the same thing side by side with a gold pan, but what the, the gold miners introduced was a form of what's called hydro uh, mining, where they actually put water under pressure and started stripping the land of resources. And when we asked them to stop doing that, they said, piss off. So we killed them. You cannot destroy the land and resources because the land and resources must be available for your future generations. So we fought a war in 1858. And ever since then, um, obviously, things have been different uh, with colonization and confederation in 1867, uh, Union uh, BC joining the, the Union in 1871. So we all know the story of indigenous uh, oppression, suppression, all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that in great detail today. But I will tell you, though, since 1858, in the Fraser Canyon War, Kanaka Bar has only said no one other time to land and resource uses. We've always put terms and conditions on the types of resource uses that I can go in here. But we did say a resounding no to the TMX pipeline. Um, there's videos on our website. There's videos on YouTube as well as uh, PowerPoints and presentations. And we explained that TMX was bad for our community, bad for the environment, bad for our children and grandchildren because of cumulative impacts as well as inconsistency with the global because of climate change. When you look at our ASK protocols that have lasted for 8,150 years, that's great. But the whole purpose of this presentation today was now we have to look at everything through a lens of climate change. Oh, look, image on the top left-hand corner. First and foremost, it's real. I don't care what you're on, whether it's anthropogenic or whether it's man-made, the temperature of the world is going up, and as a result, bad things are starting to happen. So make no mistake, Kanaka Bar accepts that climate change is real. We became aware of it in 1990, and when Severin Suzuki was 12 years old and spoke in real, we believed her. I don't know about the rest of you laggers, but any person who thinks that climate change isn't real isn't on this planet. You weren't here this summer? You weren't here on November 15th? What do you think is happening? If climate change is producing extreme weather events, it, and we'll get into that a little bit further down the road, but it's real. As a result, since the 90s, we've been studying the impacts on the land resources and the ecosystems. And coming up with a transition and adaption plan. Again, the concept is we look at everything now through a climate change lens. So for this slide, all I'm pointing out is at Kanaka Bar, there's no mistake. Climate change is real. And as a result, everything is looked through the lens of climate change. Well, oh, look at this. I love this slide. What then is a climate lens? Precisely. People throw this stuff out all the time. Oh, climate change lenses, you know anthropogenic, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I present in a way that is understandable to my community, as well as to Justin Trudeau in Ottawa, as well as John Horgan in Victoria. I don't need to go with the big gobbledygook words. You know what? If, if you want to write a PhD paper, go ahead. I, I, I do read them. I just need a thesaurus. Here we are. 
150 years of BC as a province, we're collectively facing a global existential crisis. In BC alone, we had an incredibly wildfire year in 2017, and there was a series of 104 recommendations, none of which, well, I think 40% which were done, right? In 2019, and I'm asking all the participants, go look what I presented to John Horgan, and all of his cabinet, as well as the chiefs of BC. Everything we're experiencing in 2021 was forecasted by Kanaka Bar in 2019, and it's going to get worse. So how are you going to have an environment and economy today and tomorrow if your, your roads are broken, your communication is wonky, you can't get groceries. So what we have to do is we need to invest in today in order to have a tomorrow, which we had been doing for 8,000 years. Just people need to understand what Kanaka Bar is doing can and should be replicated elsewhere. At this moment, I see 16 participants. That's 16 new converts. That's fantastic. Right? One person at a time. Look at the questions I put into the right-hand table. So now, regardless whether it's mining, whether it's forestry, whether it's rail operations, whether it's hydro, these are the questions. Remember, we've only said no to one project. I work with the mining operations in our nation and near our traditional territory, and we work really hard to ensure that their impacts are minimized and that there is a really groovy decommissioning plan. You guys know what a pipeline's decommissioning plan is? Leave it in the ground. That was one of the reasons why I objected. If you use our land and resources, you have to clean up after yourself. But according to TMX, once the pipeline stops working, they're just going to leave it there. We said that's not how it works in BC, and that's not how it works on my national lands. So these are the questions that are climate lands. So it doesn't matter whether it's forestry, fishing, road reconstruction railroad operations all this stuff are these are the questions we ask and we're not even mad about it we're not angry about it we're just saying these are big big tough questions because if it represents a perpetuation of the last 150 years that led to a global existential existential crisis we should probably say no so what we've got here now is we've got this climate change lens this is just some background information about the assessments that we've done. So we have a collective conscious memory that is 8,000 years old. We put it all together in our very first land use plan of 2015. And in that document, we came out with what's called a vision statement. The Kanaka Bar wishes to return back to a self-sufficient, sustainable, and vibrant community. Self-sufficient, right? Sustainable and vibrant. Three simple things that we're, we're, our membership, the people told us, it's number three. We work for the people. We don't work for me. We don't work for Horgan. We don't work. We're the Kanaka Bar Indian Band, and we survived 8,000 years working together as a community. And we worked as communities with our neighboring communities. And we're, we continue on that role, Litton, part of Litton Recovery, as well as other things that we're working on demonstrate that. We don't take over other people's jurisdiction. When we're invited to share, we'll share. But at the end of the day, the proximal communities to, uh, to projects are the ones that have to make the tough decision. Yes or no, yes, these are the conditions, or no, don't build. Now, I thought it was funny that I did an asset management uh, conference a little while ago, and within the conference, they focused on the physical capital. And physical capital is important, but here at Kanaka Bar, what's important is the people. What, what the greatest asset we have is actually the people. So as I get a little farther on, I just wanted to show here is that what is the current state and condition of your land and resources? Because it's that sustain you. So if your land and resources are in a bad situation, um, you know, maybe you should fix it. Please pardon me for a second. I gotta close the door. about that. So the community resiliency plan that Michelle introduced earlier, and, I, and it's quite interesting is that, so we did a land use plan and then we did a community economic development plan. And we started realizing that that was the path to a no tomorrow. In order to have a life, in order to have a quality of life, there are four foundations, air, water, food, shelter, and in that order. 
Without air, you can live for 33 uh, minutes. Without water, you can live for about three days. Without food, you can live without without three for three weeks. As long as you have the other two. Shelter, well, if you're on the coast, you probably want something that doesn't leak. And when you're, if you're at Lytton, you probably want something that's not going to be hot. You can keep it cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I have no idea what they're having in Hawaii right now, but I understand most of it's flooded out as a result of most recent rain events. So our community plan, that uh, we call it the CRP, is right there. Our membership told us what we needed to do, and that's what we do at Kanaka Bar. We're not looking at Walmarts, we're not looking at 7-Elevens, and we're sure in the heck not trying to buy TMX. So they told us what we needed to do as council and as businesses over the next five years. One of the documents that I mentioned earlier is the 2018 Climate Change Assessment. Now that you know that climate change is real, what is its forecasted impacts? So this is just a summary. Now, our Kanaka Park uh, Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment is available online if you've never seen one before. So we studied the Purple Polygon area. This is the impact that climate change on there, and we made a lot of forecasting. And for example, we forecasted, so the world is saying, oh my goodness, if we, if we change the global temperature by 1.5 degrees, we, we, that's the global temperature. Kanaka Bar is forecasting a six degree change in daily temperature because climate change produces site specific impacts. You don't want to know about Kamloops' climate change impacts. You need to know about yours. So, wherever your community is, you need to know what's coming. I don't think Kanaka Bar will get a tornado, but ask anybody in Alberta. I'm sure they're getting tornadoes. Wind warning. I understand that Fort St. John last year got a tornado. That was BC. I've seen images now of water spouts on the coast. The water spouts are, are tornadoes over the ocean. The wind is becoming pretty scary. But the emphasis I'm saying here is if you need to look at a climate change vulnerability assessment, there's one online at Kanaka Bar. Go on, find it, right click and steal. Now, this is the fourth image from the opening slide. So Kanaka Bar's base, which I talked about, is air, water, food, shelter. Well, at Kanchili, the thing about bases is that you also need systems, what are known as systems, for energy. So we all have two legs and a heartbeat, and if we needed to go somewhere, you slap something on your dog, right? And then the horse was introduced, so then we took, we took advantage of the horse. And after the horse, we took advantage of the buggy. And after the horse, we took advantage of the car. So First Nations across BC were never stuck. One of the things that made First Nations important was our ability to adapt. When we saw a technology and or a tool, we learned how to use it. And this is important when it comes to climate change transition and adaption. The tools exist out there for you to handle the extreme weather events that are coming to your community. Energy. Kanaka Bar has 12 operating solar projects. Kanaka Bar has two operating wind projects. Kanaka Bar has uh, one hydro project. There's many smaller, medium, and large-scale projects that are in our queue. Uh, we just opened up a brand new community building, which is powered by the sun with battery storage, so that if the hydro grid goes down, we can continue to have the energy systems that support the physiological foundations. At this moment, I'm speaking on a landline because my my internet says really bad connectivity. So communications. Well, uh, there it is. Your internet connection is unstable. Huh, whatever that is, I'm unstable. My internet shouldn't be. Whoops, uh, sorry, I digress. <laughs> anyway, communication. So back in the day, you yelled at your neighbor, hey, Bob, right? With the extreme winds, uh, you know, uh, smoke signals kind of get lost. So you could always write, then you had landlines, and uh, now today is we have cell phones. But if there's no cell bars, how do we communicate? You can always still yell at your neighbor, right? So we used to run, so we used to sell, send stories before Simon Fraser. So Simon Fraser arrived on June 20th of 1808, but a runner came down from the community above us ahead of him. So we had two days to prepare for Simon Fraser because he knew we knew he was coming, right? Moccasin telegraph, word of mouth, stuff really works. So communications becomes critical. Transportation. How do we get from point A to point B? 
two legs and a heartbeat still works. So when it comes to transportation, if the roads close, we can still walk to town, right? Assuming there's a town to walk to. So don't take don't take those eight bases for granted. Because on June 30th, I can tell you what happened to Lytton, and we're going to get there. All of that was lost in less than 20 minutes. Now, this last uh, circle, so I had this circle called the climate change circle. So what we have here now is Kanakabar has always known that what you do to land or you allow others to do, you do to yourself. Those are called impacts, and you can have positive impacts or you can have adverse impacts. Regardless of what your impacts are, it produces the cumulative effects, whether it's the warming of the rivers, whether it's contaminants in the air, uh, whether it's global temperature. So cumulative effects is producing the global warming. So remember with awareness, we now know that everything we're doing is producing global warming. It's not global warming that burnt my, my town down. It's not uh, global warming that knocked out my highway one at a whole bunch of locations. It was that global warming is producing extreme weather events. That's what we actually have to prepare for. Because if we're waiting on Ottawa and we're waiting for the 178 world leaders post-COP 26 now, I'm going to pick the name here. Ken, you should probably put in the chat room, how do you find uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's video? Arnold Schwarzenegger did an eight-minute video on Twitter. We basically told the world's leaders, if you don't follow through with your COP26 commitments, you're either a liar, corrupt, or stupid, and that the world leaders need to grow a set of balls. It's a great video. Very American, very Arnie. So, what we have here is we had a lot of people promise us at COP26, 26 times they've made these promises and that they're going to reduce our impacts, thus reduce global warming, and thus eliminate extreme weather events. Story at Kanaka Bar, we know what human nature is like. So what we wanted to do here is in the chat room, somebody ask for it or Elsie and others, we can send that out to the participant list later or put it on the recording. So as Canadians, as British Columbians, as, as families, as individuals, we have to make a choice. Do we invest in our tomorrow by being proactive? Or do we deal with reactive, now reactive? Now, if all day today, my stomach's been in a bit of a sour spot, right? I'm living in an RV that froze over the weekend, right? I, I, I had no water. I had to get the water running. Then I had to figure out how to fix the gray water and black water, all this sort of stuff. 25 years I had a house on June 30th that burnt down in less As a father and as a husband and as a grandfather, I have to ensure that my family has adequate shelter. So that is a priority. So after hours and on weekends, I try to make sure that our shelter is maintained. Air, water, food, shelter. It's not easy. Response mode is not easy, and it makes for a really unhealthy heart. It makes for a really unhealthy mind. Why would we do that? Why wouldn't we then invest? So look at the words I put on the right of proactive. If you are aware of the risks, and you have site-specific data, and you make the investments, you can adapt. You can be ready for the changes that are coming. Right? There you go. As we wait for the world to change their impacts, to change the cycle, we have a responsibility today to ensure that our, ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren have a tomorrow. And you can only do that by being proactive. Because waiting for Victoria and uh, an Ottawa to do the right thing, that's a long wait. 8,000 years of autonomy, 150 years of dumbness, and Kanakabar, we're autonomous again. I don't need Victoria or Ottawa's help to bring back a vibrant, sustainable, and self-sufficient community. Remember the 2015 vision statement? That's all we do is we work on those eight areas. Everything else is gravy. So Kanaka Bar, I told you that you need site-specific data. You need to know the water, groundwater, surface water, lake water, Fraser River water. You need to know your rain, air. Is there particulates? Is there allergens? Is there other forms of toxins in the air? Temperature. How cold is it? Temperature. How hot is it? Wind speed. How, which way is the wind coming from? How strong is it? Is it Miami-Dade level winds? Because we've had one. 
It wasn't a tornado, but we had a wind event two years ago that ripped roofs off and tore down uh, patios. So I'm still trying to backtrack that data because that happened in Lytton, not at Kanaka Bar, very site specific. Maybe we did have a tornado because if it didn't show in everybody else's weather stations, so we have three weather stations. Every one of our water streams is gauged so that we have the data that helps us design the, the hardware and software and the houses and the infrastructure for tomorrow. One of the things I wanted to add here on this slide here is that just reinforcing, we govern through transparency. The last bullet point says the intercontinental word for recall is other. Every third Thursday at five o'clock, I provide a 30 day look forward and a 30 look day look back to membership in person and in virtually. And after I'm finished, the membership are asked other. And sometimes they ask about the Christmas party and sometimes they might ask for a laptop because of homeschooling. And when I say, haven't heard no other, we adjourn for another 30 days. Because twice in five years, people have asked for a change in leadership. I only have a 30-day mandate. And I face recall every third Thursday. I would call that accountability. As a result, if the community gives me the tell, tells me the steps what to do, and I report to them, that's transparency reporting. Then I actually could be safe. Chief James and recall provisions. Now I haven't counted how many recalls I've gone through since May 2nd of 2015. It's an easy enough count. The membership tell me what to do. On reserve and off reserve, that's what we do. As council and as staff and as corporations, is we do what our membership tell us to do. We don't decide what's in the best interest for them. They tell us what's in the best interest for them, and we roll it out. So getting off the four things here now, I want to get into the fact is that what we've just experienced and saw recently is not weather. So I created uh, the climate change wolves. And June 30th is an example. So we're all aware of the heat dome. I asked each and every one of your participants to review a four minute video from BBC called Life After 50. And I see Don and Peter on it, so they look like they're over 50. Well, I can tell you why I'm 56, but we're not talking about age, we're talking about 50 degrees Celsius. So as a result of June 30th, the BBC was doing a series called Life After 50 Degrees, and they were looking at uh, Sahara. They didn't find a place in Canada that was recorded temperature in excess of 50 degrees temperature. That is excessive heat. And Canada and BC aren't ready for that type of heat event. But then climate change's uh, extreme weather events also include rain, wind, and cold. So we're gonna get into those details, but I just want you guys to know that an extreme weather event isn't weather. Weather is, it's raining. Weather is, it's windy. Weather is, it's hot. An extreme weather event is, holy cow, it's hot. Holy cow, it's pissing. Holy cow, it's blowing. And holy cow, I couldn't start my car. So we have these four extreme weather events. Now, I'm not going to get into the details about what could be happening on the ocean. I'm an interior plateau community. So I just want you guys to understand that that's what's out there. So this is a part of our temperature gauging. We have three temperature gaugings, right? So what we did here is we had the band office at 46.3, highway one at 47.8, and our lowest property was at 50.2 on June 30th. The village of Lytton was at 49.6. And we all know the joke about the village of Lytton's weather station. The village of Lytton's weather station is hidden in a gully so that the wind and sun doesn't damage it. The actual temperature of Lytton was 55 degrees Celsius. Everybody knew it except the Minister of Environment Canada, who doesn't want their weather station to get hurt by the extreme weather event. It was hot. Hot like we've never seen before. And it was scary. So when I asked you guys to watch the life after 50 degrees, you saw the end result of the heat wolf. We're going to have more next year. 
Are you ready? This is a sign from October 15th, okay? So on October 15th, uh, my wife had gathered as many of the Litten evacuees from the June 30th fire as possible. And there was 140 of us gathered on beside Tinar's right away. And this is one of the signs. This isn't just a Litten problem. This isn't a BC problem. This isn't a Canadian problem. It's a global problem. Is your home ready? We lost air, water, food, shelter, energy, transportation, communications, and the waste system in 20 minutes. And it's still not running 162 days later. So where's the quality of life? Where's the life of your children and grandchildren when you don't have a waste system, when you don't have a water system, when the communications don't even exist? They haven't even put the electricity back into the freaking town. So they've, they're able to bring these services right up to the edges of Lytton, but they still don't have a full-blown recovery plan. You need people, time, technology, and money for resources. Meanwhile, the Lytton 1200, where are they? Well, I managed to move up to next to the school. Uh, I would call it squatting. After all, that's where my... Anyway, um, I'll, I'll digress. And as, a, as Kanakabar's story and my story gets to be more well-known, I'm okay now at at Stein Valley School. We're skirting the basement. I've even figured out how to keep my pipes warm until the skirting comes up, and it's, it's hard. Or is your home ready? So we talked about the environment and economy of today. Tell that to Diane Miller who lost her restaurant in the fire. You can't have a sustainable business if it's burnt down. You can't have a motel if there's no water because you need water for your sewage. So what we need here is we don't make those investments that I referred to either. All of a sudden, your economy stops. What do you think happens if you lose your roads? I don't know. Let's have a look. Okay. I just want you to know here is that we also monitor air quality, and we're going to get to what happens when you lose your infrastructure, your systems. Okay. So we also record our weather data here. Paul. And so you'll see, you'll see the spikes that occurred, but you have to remember the Litton fire was north, but so most of the smoke was blowing to the north, but we were getting spikes of smoke. Now, I don't think tan's very good on the scale. You probably don't want to be outside uh, if your air quality index is at 10. Rain. We're talking about an extreme weather event. We're going to call it a rain. <laughs> it's been 23 days since the atmospheric river. You know what happened to Highway 1? You know what happened to Merritt? You know what happened to the Lower Main Line? I haven't gone out of my community since November 5th. But no, I, I heard about this rain event that was coming. I haven't left Lytton since November 12th, and neither did my family. Because when they say there's this massive wall of water coming, you should probably stay home and shelter in place. And sure enough, bad things happen. Wait a minute, here I'm going to go back. It's been 162 days since Litton burnt, and it's been, isn't that called concurrent response mode? We haven't even recovered from the damn Litton fire, and now we're dealing with this. Complete failure in energy, communications, and transportation. So just when you start thinking you're getting a heads up, and I'm good. This isn't this isn't abysmal. You guys need to understand here. We've got this. So although that sounds scary, um, Kanakabar has made a significant investment in our future. I can show you this since the fire, the rabbit got into the garden. That was our great tragedy until the, the atmospheric river. By investing in physiological foundations and the supporting systems, Kanakabar was okay. We can forgive the pun weathered the heat event and we're weathering the rain event i can't say the same for everybody else my grandmother used to say they know they're building in a floodplain right i said yes grandma they know well what are they going to do when they flood i don't know grandma probably call ottawa probably call bc if you know that you're at risk from basic weather and or extreme weather why would you put your infrastructure there it's just one of the things that boggled my grandmother, and she talked to me about why. 
23 days since November 15th. As you know, we would gauge our streams. So we had, and I just asked for some stuff. So there's our normal rain. So on the 14th, we had a once in every 100 year storm event. And then the day after, we had even more rain. The ditches, the creeks, the culverts, the intakes, the roads weren't designed to handle this. And here we are, we're projecting an increase in intensity, duration, and frequency. So that's, the engineers call it the IDF. So if you ever talk to an engineer or a geoscientist, ask them to explain IDF, which I call FDI. You say potato, I say potato. Frequency, duration, intensity of heat, wind, rain, and cold. Rise. Be ready. We had a heck of a lot of water. And it hit us again. And it hit us again. But you know what? What we had, though, was rain after the atmospheric river, and it looked bad because the ground was saturated. So what you're seeing and experiencing now is they're calling. So they introduced the word atmospheric river into our lexicon, and every time it rains now, people are scared. It's called heightened anxiety. It's raining. Will I lose my road? Will I lose my power? Will I lose my Facebook? Yeah, Facebook does go down during an extreme rain event, just so you know. Ask Robin Ward. Pretty sure that my website is still accessible, though. <laughs> this is what happened at Kanaka. We built a lovely little trail to the top of Jackass Mountain, and that was in the summertime. That is where my water gauging station is, despite the extreme heat. This was in uh, early June during a heat event. Water was still flowing at our creeks. That was my creek on November 15th. We lost our intake, we lost the trail, we lost the bridge, we lost the water. And so what happens is we don't have a plan. That's one event. And I can't go over there because the water is just starting to subside. But see, we're smart here at Kanaka Bar. We only put in a dollar store intake, and as soon as it's safe, we'll go in with the 33, 30, 30 feet of two-inch pipe that we lost and throw another dollar store intake in. So the next time Sliwash Creek decides to go bonkers, we only lose a dollar store intake. That's how smart we were. We knew that Sliwash was a risk, so we put in dollar store infrastructure so that when it washes away, we can replace it quickly and easily as soon as it's safe to do so. And we will be doing that next week. I'm just saying there's no plan yet because I still haven't found the pipe or the intake. But you know what? Uh, maybe I'll send a picture to everybody as soon as it's fixed. It's 33, 30 feet of pipe, and you throw it back into the creek, it'll work. The rain event. Now, Kanaka Bar still has its electricity. It still has its communications. But I can tell you at this moment, our increased anxiety is hurting our hearts and minds. And I'm finding a lot of short tempers. We have short fuses now. Even though we haven't been directly impacted per se, the fact that I can't go to Kamloops because of that bridge is upsetting and it's unsettling. So they call it climate change anxiety. And it's okay because at Kanaka Bar, we're still able to get the meats, fruits and vegetables and the dairy and the milk. So we're still able to meet the basic needs of the communities. Now, people want to go to Kamloops because either they want to watch a movie or they want to go to Tim Hortons and Ashcroft. That's an inconvenience. That's a want. So Kanaka Bar, because of our investments, is able to meet the needs of the community. And that's what our community said. You meet our needs, we'll take care of our wants. So if you want Wi-Fi, to give you Wi-Fi, but you still have to pay for it. We don't make Wi-Fi for, available for free. Opening date, unknown. Four kilometers from us. For years, we've been talking to the province as the railroads and say, your infrastructure that you designed in 1957 and 1884 wasn't designed for the rain events we're having, let alone extreme weather events. You should probably change these culverts out before it's too late. And they said, meh. When are they going to open up Jackass Mountain? Four kilometers? Don't know yet. Every time they put the machinery there, the slope fails away. I think that they're saying maybe we should put a bridge there now. What does that do to Kanaka Bar residents? It makes us upset in their hearts and their minds because now we can't go down to Hope. We can't get to Tim Hortons. 
We still have the essentials. So I want you guys to see this. Highway 12. The reason why we're still doing okay at Kanaka Bar is the worst road in BC is called Highway 12. It has a section called the Big Slide. The curves on it, it's a dangerous road. You shouldn't be traveling it. It's still open. And as a result, we're able to get up to Little Wit and get the basic essentials for the community. So we have groceries coming in and some of the, so it's incredible that, you know, some people will donate, a, a truck will come in from Kamloops from Save on Foods, and we bag it up and we distribute it to each one of the homes. Our store, though, at our community building, that's still open. I can tell you that a few people were pissy at us because we ran out of Coca-Cola and potato chips. I'm not driving up to a little bit and uh, loading up a, dump, uh, a pickup truck so that you can have chips and pop. You have vehicles, you can go up there. But we bring the essentials to the community. That's a rain event. I can tell you, though, my wife was up there. She, we have a vehicle, and it got trapped on, on the other side of a slide. That is really stressful when your wife is trapped in deep fog on the other side of a slide at 5 o'clock at night. We need to be able to get our infrastructure back. The physical needs is important, but we also need to fix the climate change anxiety that people are experiencing. When we look at the environment and the economy through that climate change lens, all this was known, all of this was and the, the fragility of the roads to the attention of the decision makers. I brought the, the fragility of the transportation systems and BC Hydro's fragility to their respective leaders, and they chose not to act. And as a result, the rail lines were lost, BC Hydro was lost, and I'm sure that one of the reasons why my TELUS is that really sporadic is you see the bloody pole? That's where my TELUS lines is on. Windwolf. I'm going to be conducting a test of uh, products that are available, and I'm going to get to this. And the test will be Miami-Dade wind test on project components, whether it's, uh, and we'll just call it the wall. So the standardized test for wind resistance in a build product is called the Miami-Dade test. The only thing I'm suggesting that we should do is throw something at it at the speed. So we have gusts, Hurricane Katrina. If you're on the coast, you know what a bad wind event is. If you're on the prairies, you know what a bad wind event is. If you live in the Fraser Canyon, we're learning what a bad wind event is. So our build stuff and our families are at risk. The most recent one was in Alberta where semis were being blown off the highway. I haven't seen the images of that yet. The wind wolf. That's coming. Are you ready? The cold wolf. This is the one that I was afraid of the most. Ask any Texans who, I think it was last fall or last winter, Texas had this extreme wall of cold hit. And it shut down our energy grid. So that means homes lost power. And as a result of the lost power, they lost the ability to heat the homes. Their pipes froze. I don't know how long they were down, but it took them a long time to get their energy grid back online. But once they got their homes heated, then their pipes froze. Thought? And then, of course, they're dealing. They're still in recovery mode down in Texas. I hadn't realized until I did this. I forgot that January and February were really cold last year. This is why I'm worried. I have to get my RV ready for the January and February temperatures. It's coming. So when we talk about um, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the environment of yesterday, the environment of today, the environment of tomorrow, I wanted to give you guys that story about the three little pigs in a straw homes. And in the original story, you know that the pig blew down the straw and the stick, but failed on brick. But now, the wolf runs in a pack. He's also got heat, water, and cold. Are your homes ready? Are your businesses? Because if they're not ready for today, they're sure to heck not going to be ready for tomorrow. So we either build back brand new infrastructure uh, that supports uh, homes and businesses, or you retrofit and bring that back up. What are you going to do? I know what we're, we're doing. We're building brick here at Kanaka Bar. 
Well, what is that? Goes back to them saying. So I'm not here to sensationalize. That's my home. I watch it on BBC. That's my home. This is the third home I've lost. 56 years. First one was 1965. Last one was 1983. And each time I built back. And I built back with stick. My wife were thinking this time we're going to build back with brick. There are materials out there in the world that you can utilize for new and also retrofit your home. So we've commissioned that study. Okay. This November 30th letter is an open letter to all people. Please download it. There are 14 participants. If you, if you want to find out what we're saying, this is the start of the letter. Is there an affordable alternative to straw and stick? Yes. How do you know? Because Kanaka Bar Ban has engaged the, B the Canadian schools to do a study. One, desk exercise, and two, I want them to burn stuff. I want them to free stuff. I want them to dunk stuff, and I want to see free shoot two by fours at them. A lot of people say they have the product of the future. Well, I'm Chief Kanaka Bar. If you're going to take on a climate change wolf, we need a pretty big gun. So I've got three Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, Okanagan College, and BCIT doing a study. And one of the studies says, can you afford this? These are the notes. This is what the region wants to know. Each and every one of you, you're an individual, you have family, you have children, you have grandchildren. Maybe you're going to expect grandchildren. If you don't have somebody younger than you, then grab somebody. I'm sure, well, in a good way, right? Just help the neighbors, uh, the neighbor's kids. Find a reason to, to find out how to renovate your homes. So this is only a snippet. There's actually four pages long of questions, comments, concerns that were already raised by the people who lost their homes on June 30th. And the work that we're doing between now and April will help you understand what you can do to have a feature. Now, there's my four images. That's my daughter and two of my grandchildren in Canada's hotspot. There's the eight foundations, okay? That's all we do, those eight things. That's all we work on. If we have surplus, that's a benefit. That's what an economy is. We're ready for the environment economy today, but more importantly, my children, my grandchildren, with awareness and investment in our tomorrow. If you guys want to know more about what we're doing, so this, every six months, I have to produce a six-month look back and a six-month look forward. We're calling them the biannual plans. This is the most recent one. It's dated November 29th. I've given you the link to how to find all of them. So every six months, I provide information to my membership. This is what we did over the last six months. This is what we're doing over the next six months. I've shared uh, on the Internet as well with the federal and provincial governments projects that can be rolled out at Kanaka Bar. That would benefit all British Columbians and Canadians. Not getting a lot of traction there, but you can see that's why we called it the Fraser County Resiliency Project. This is what a Kanakabara looks like last week. Okay, so we've invested heavily in, and just look at the areas, the site-specific data, food self-sufficiency. Just want to let you guys know that by 2024, there will probably be no sockeye left to harvest for traditional uh, food purposes in the Fraser River at Kanakabara. So we are going to start raising our own. So while the world is going worse to salmon, we're going to be doing um, land-based aquaculture, and we're calling it hybrid because we have uh, the fish in the bottom and the greens and that on the top. So we'll be rolling that out. Uh, the community building, we talked about the camp. So all of us here, everything you need to know about what Kanaka Bar is doing is online. We uh, broke ground. Um, I'm not sure. Um, on an October 21st, we broke ground on something called the Crossing Place. So by October of 20, 2022, 24 new uh, housing units are coming in, and you'll see the big blue building at the bottom of this image. That is actually going to be another community resiliency center. So these community resiliency centers look like a band a band hall until an emergency happens. The lights stay on. It stays cool in the summer. It stays warm in the winter. BC Hydro works. So all this stuff continues to work. 
And so I just wanted you guys to know that's what's coming. This is more housing. But I said, it is a solution for the entire region. All we have to do is convince you to move here. And I've been bugging Aaron Coelho for years that maybe he should give up Kamloops and move here. Oh, Aaron, is that you? I see Aaron's name. We are ready. We've cleared the land. This is a highway one center. Air, water, food, shelter, energy, transportation, communications, waste. If you can get to Kanaka Bar and the roads are closed, here's your grocery stores, there's your accommodation, there's your food, there's a place you can sleep. But we're also putting in eight electric vehicle charging stations, all powered by wind, sun, and water with batteries. Sure, if the grid's on, we don't have to worry about too much about it, but why do we have to suffer because BC Hydro's washed out? Why do we have to suffer because BC Hydro's burnt out? Why do we have to suffer when BC Hydro's lines get blown over? And why do we have to suffer when BC Hydro's lines have ice storms and the wires snap? If you invest in your tomorrow, you're going to be okay. Easy as one, two, three. Everything we do and the green that is throughout my presentation is for our children and grandchildren. It's their future. We have the responsibility as parents and as grandparents to manage the land and resources for our future generations. In 1858, we learned that we were wrong. We needed more, 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 now, 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 me, me, me. Well, I'm here to say it's 2021. That way is the status quo. Remember those resiliency questions? You need to learn how to say no. We're all in this together. I don't have my suit jacket on, but for those people who know me, there's only two things on my lapel. One is the BC flag and one is the Canadian flag. I'm really proud of our province. I'm really proud of our country. We have an amazing place. And despite the best efforts of a lot of people for over 150 years, we still have a really good future. But we need to make these significant decisions. As my grandson, Atreus, when you watch the videos, and I just found three more. Three more was released today. I haven't had a chance to watch them. I think it's the Toronto Star. My daughter was eight months pregnant when she gave birth, to, uh, and then when the fire happened, and she gave birth to Atreus in Abbotsford. And she kept telling me we didn't know what to name him, and then it turns out it's Atreus Patrick. My 16th grandchild is named after me, so I now have somebody to mold. So if anything happens to me, a trash will take care of you tomorrow. It's 2.53 p.m. And I just wanted to share, if Kanaka Bar can do it, so can you. Everything we've done is easily understandable. You can find it online. You can send me an email. I'm happy to answer you. I'm usually going to hit you with a PowerPoint and or a video. What you need to do is right there. Only eight things you need to invest in, and you'll be okay. If you don't have the money, um, don't know what to say. We never had money for 8,000 years, so don't let money be the true barrier. When it comes to your health and wellness and health and wellness, just change your priorities. Nakabar did, and we're doing okay. So thank you so much. Um, we'll turn it back over to Michelle to see if there's any questions, and uh, thank you again, everybody. Cooks jump. Ah, hey, hey, Chief Patrick, um, what a compelling presentation, but more than a presentation, you're talking about your life and what you have, you and your community have um, endured, have walked through, have rose from, um, talk about per, um, resiliency and persistence. Uh, thank you so much for the story that you shared today and the importance of taking this very seriously. And we all, as you said, we all have a part to play. We are a solution. Um, in the chat box, we had uh, Karen saying, thank you very much, very powerful, and I agree. Um, so we have time for uh, one or two questions. So anyone out there have any questions for Chief Patrick on today's presentation. Feel free to unmute yourself. Come on in. Yeah, uh, Peter has his hand up. Oh, Peter, you're muted. 
you're going to need to unmute yourself. Oh, just letting you know, Peter, you're muted. Huh? Okay, maybe. Okay, so Justin. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, White Husk Holly squeezed uh, Justin Peters and Skamhishan. I just wanted to say thank you. You said 14 converts. I heard you speak a couple years ago, so I was already long converted, but uh, I really appreciate when you. <laughs> When you speak, um, you, you speak about action and you speak about not depending on the government. And I really do appreciate that because like uh, I get thrown into a lot of climate change things. And, you know, sometimes there's no action. There's just more surveys upon surveys upon, you know, questions upon this upon. And, and another thing I've noticed is that it's it, it can be politically divisive, either like people deny it too much or people blow it like blow up hysteria they're too hysterical about it and provide no solutions but i really like how um i do have a question though i was thinking man you, you should have like a master class or um uh or, or are you thinking of like having some video um more video resources of your projects for people because you know the papers are good they're full of information and jam-packed but a lot of people just they don't read you know the 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 video and audio medium reaches farther so i was wondering i oh, just just an idea um yeah i really thank you and i i wish more people would find i should go on a mission for you get more converts or something but uh, i really do appreciate it thanks well, um, Justin, thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost is that we needed to make sure that we rolled out those uh, projects in those eight areas. And obviously that uh, we'll, we'll talk to schools about potentially getting an interns who, I mean, everybody wants to see the fact sheets. I mean, how much production did you do? Uh, you know what? The sunshine, I produce solar. That's good enough for me. My hydro bill is 10 bucks. How much I actually produced? Somewhat irrelevant to me. Um, but at the same time, fact sheets, how much did it cost for the solar tracker? 63000 How long will it take to pay back? 12 years. How much did it talk to the rooftop? 10000 How long will it take to pay back? Seven years. So what you do is these are capital costs that pay back over time because they're generating financial return. But the actual business case is a long time. I'll give you an example. The must-stop rest stop is a 120-page feasibility report. I'm forecasting negative $189,000 income in year one of operation. Yeah. Can you imagine 24 full-time jobs in the middle of nowhere, but government subsidized things that are important. So 24 times. And the thing is, if you look at the actual years, Everything that we're building at Kanaka Bar is called legacy assets. That means they will last at least 100 years. So the capital costs will be retired in 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. But the actual returns will continue for indefinite. So these are what are legacy assets. The new water system that we put in, easily 100 years that will last. The gardens that we put in, easily 200 years. All you have to do is get up and plant and you're golden. So we're changing the foundations for our future generations by investing in them today. Our summer students come in, they study all the stuff, they play with the data, the software, and they generate the reports. But whether or not we ever generate something like a manual, I don't know how many videos there are on our website. I know that I did a, a video called Climate Change Wolves the other day. That's on our website now. I still need to locate these uh, videos. Offered, and I will mentor a young man or a woman who uh, I can't remember what we're called, so I was supposed to reply. So somebody has asked to work with me for a year virtually. So I, I build capacity one on one. All it takes is a hey, chief, here, here's my passwords. Dory, you're behind me. Do you actually want me touching anything? Or No. Chief's not allowed to touch the hardware and software. I've got fat hands. I think I'm the one, probably the one responsible for breaking the internet. That's why I'm yelling at you on a phone. So the 
we can produce it more so, but I'd rather just deliver functioning projects and then have academics or engineers come in and reverse engineer what we did. Everything I know is saved. Just somebody needs to put it in a data or a fact sheet that would make, would go work for them. Good question, Justin. Yeah, really good question. Um, and you're a really good resource. So what we're what's happening from here is we are actually sending you this PowerPoint presentation with all the links um, that he had mentioned. And I feel like there's some takeaways here that go read on it, go look into it. Um, and also, I think as we close, because the, the time is up, um, I think your information, your contact information is in one of the PowerPoints here. Is it not, Chief Patrick? If you have any questions, reach out, send yeah. an email. But I also understand, like, he's he's also busy, too. Um, but he, he did leave his contact information there for us. Um, so we do send it's all really our... Sure before you end. Yeah. Yep. It's Chief at Kanaka or Indian Band. And all I ask you is put in something in the subject line. I call emails, I get about 300 a day, but if you put to something proper in a subject line, I'm always on it. I just, this is the only time for the last hour I have not checked my emails because I'm 100% laser focused on your group. But email me, I check my emails at nights and weekends and it may take me a day or two, but I value every, every question that comes in because it's your questions that help me understand more so what we've done. So it's a quid pro quo. Those people who ask questions are very valued uh, to our community. We learn together. Wow. That's amazing. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You can reach out. Um, as he said, he values your uh, voice, your questions. So if you do have any questions, please reach out. We are so grateful, um, Chief Patrick, that you have lent your time, your story, your passion, your knowledge, your understanding to this very, very important um, topic, climate change that is affecting us all and being mindful of, you know, the generations that are coming. We want to leave this world so that they have somewhere good to live as well. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon. We hope you have a good rest of the day uh, and be well wherever you walk and be mindful of your spirit. Um, be mindful of the land, Mother Earth and the community around you and always, always walk in a way that honors creator. Take care. Peace.